Hey everyone, just wanted to say before this video gets started is that I do have a giveaway going on for a copy of Rise of Angmar. So if you guys want to win one of these copies, uh, it will be drawn on Sunday, this coming Sunday on, uh, in our live stream. Uh, if you do want to enter it, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe, and uh, comment down below what you guys are most excited for about Rise of Angmar. If you've already entered, if, if you've already you know, done this in one of the previous videos, you don't have to enter again, you'll automatically be entered. But uh, and uh, yeah, sh share the video out, let's get more people joining in on the Middle Earth SVG fun. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here on Middle Earth Gaming and in today's video we are going through once again the Rise of Angmar and as you guys can see this is a cellophane, this is your copy, this could be your copy um, but uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is going to be doing, this is our fourth video now so what we've done previously, we've done a quick review, we've done like a, you know, a flick through kind of really, and now we're going really in depth in uh, reviewing the book itself. So we've done the scenarios already, we've done the new profiles and an updated profile as well. And now in this video, we're going to be going through the Legendary Legions. And there are seven. There's seven Legendary Legions in this book. There's five from the main part of the book, and there's also two from the appendices. Um, and then in the and there'll be, there'll be one more video after this so you guys will be thrilled to know and uh, that will be covering the appendices and the other areas in this book as well because there's, there's a few other things in here as well um, but I hope you guys have been enjoying so far if you have make sure to leave a like comment share and subscribe as well if you haven't already um, I also do want to say that uh, you know I haven't really put this out yet and you know there's obviously no pressure whatsoever because it's you know it's kind of hard to talk about this kind of stuff soon, sometimes but I've just started channel memberships as well so if you guys would, guys would like to support the channel in any way whatsoever um, of course you can do so for free by doing like by liking by sharing by subscribing as well but if you'd like to support in either way and get some uh, cool little perks along the way as well uh, you can do that and that is in the description, in the description below as well but uh, let's get straight into it let's talk about these legendary legions because there's some cool stuff in here guys all right guys and here we have the legendary legion so let's get straight into it if you don't know what legendary legions are uh i don't know where you've been for the last six years but um of course they are a different way for you guys to play so basically a army list that gives you a uh, certain uh special rules additional rules um which is pretty cool. So first of all, we have the Battle of Forest. Um, so a little bit of the blurb here. At the time when the Kingdom of Arnold was crumbling and embroiled in constant war with the forces of the Witch King, Abdul uh, sent out messages requesting aid to Gondor, Arnold's sister kingdom in the south. However, Gondor itself was at war with Mordor and its allies to the east and south and was unable to send aid northwards with as much haste as they would have liked. Um, so basically, it's all about um, after the the fall of Fornost uh, by the Witch King, the Witch King basically sat on the throne of Fornost for about a year, and now the combined armies of you know we've got Glorfindel, we've got Aana, of course, who's the last king of Gondor. I think he was a prince at this time, um, but uh, you know we've even got some hobbits in here as well, which is cool. Um, so yeah, the, the skilled general from Ar Ar Gondor, Aana, looks. Uh, leads his cover in a devastating charge against their foes, and there is a special rule uh, with that in there as well. So we get um, uh, Gondor will not fight alone against the darkness. Cur uh, G Glorfindel and Rivendell, uh, sorry, C Glorfindel of Rivendell and Curtain of Linden have brought uh, with them a great host of elves, um, and of course Aranaf's leading the, uh, the the Dunedain, the remnants of Arnor at this point. So we have the army composition. So we can take Ayana, last king of Gondor, with arm and horse and a lance. You can take Glorfindel, of course, the new lovely new Glorfindel model that you can see there. We have Curden, which is cool. We have Aranaf, the first chief of the Dunedain. We have the captain of Minas Tirith. Um, basically, all those same options that you can usually take. A high elf captain and a ranger of the north. We have a Dunedain, which is cool. Uh, a, and a ranger of Arnor, which is of course the plastic rangers. We have a warrior of Minas Tirith, a knight of Minas Tirith, a high elf warrior, and a hobbit archer. Of course, the hobbits did go, or well, I, I mean, they, they never actually arrived, but like there's accounts of them never arriving, but there are accounts of them leaving the battle. So maybe they just went there and, and said hello, but um, it, it is very, very cool. So that's what you can take in the army. So obviously, you guys can see a very big mixture. Um, I don't think there has ever, has there been a, a army list or like a legendary legion so far where you could take high elves with men and things like that. I don't think there has been. It's kind of cool. So um, I think this is going to be a very well-rounded list. 
Um, obviously, there's not too many special rules, but the special rules that we do have um, are pretty cool. But first of all, we have some additional rules. So we have a battle a battle of Fornos Force must include Ayana, Larsen, Gondor, and Glorfindel. So obviously, that's a lot of points in itself. So, you know, if you just take Ayana and Glorfindel without anything, they're, they're 245 points by themselves. Um, if you take Armored Horse and Lance, that's another 20 points, so that's 265. And if you have Armor of Gondolin and Asphaloft, you know, that's almost 300 points if you want to take them with, the, with their gear. So it's obviously going to be for larger points values. I would say at least 700 points, if not more. Um, but of course, you'd want some, uh, uh, you'd, you'd want some captains for that heroic march and you'd want um, some uh, normal warriors in there. And with these special rules, um, you'd want to take some ver like some certain types of units as well. Uh, so first of all, uh, only Gondor heroes may lead Gondor warriors, and only elf heroes may lead elf warriors. That makes sense. Um, obviously, that's um, happened in on quite a few legions recently, uh, especially in the Battle of Dale Legion. Um, of course, only dwarves could lead dwarves, and Men of Dale could lead Men of Dale. Uh, Hobbit archers may only be included in warbands led by a Ranger of the North or Dunedain, in which case they Ranger of the North or Dunedain will be treated as a minor hero, which means they can uh, lead six. Uh, we have the special rules, Ayana's defense. Ayana cannot be ha cannot have his courage value reduced by enemy special rules or magical powers. Obviously, if you're going up against Ring Wraiths or Aimar just in general, um, that's really, really cool. Really, really uh, nice ability there. Power of the Elves, the friendly models gain the resistant to magic special rules. So obviously, this is a force designed to go up against Aimar. You know, obviously, there's a lot of, uh, you know, magic and all that kind of shenanigans going on. And then we have the Charge of Gondor. Friendly Gondor cavalry models gain a bonus of plus one to their 5 AU on a turn in which they charged. That's kind of amazing. Um, bonus plus one to their 5 AU. So you basically... Oh, is it uh, Gondor... They, they norm, I'm guessing they're normal 5 AU 4, so they probably go up to 5 AU 5. Or 3 up to 4, or 4 up to 5. Um, absolutely incredible. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. I would have liked to see them maybe have an extra strength maybe as well. Maybe like how the Rohan gets it. Um, but either way, that's going to be very cool. Um, so obviously, if you're going to take this Legion, you need to take some Knights, just to at least get some benefits um, from that rule. Uh, Designers host the Legendary Legion represents the forces that fought to liberate Fornos from the clutches of the Witch King. It contains both men and elves led by Ayana and Glorfindel, respectively, who must both be included in this force. The cavalry Ayana leads pack a serious punch, gaining plus one to the 5A on the charge, allowing them to smash through shield walls that little bit easier. Uh, the Ayana's Defiant special rule prevents the King of Gondor from having his courage reduced, which is the perfect for ensuring he sticks around for as long as possible in a fight. So there you go. Uh, a very cool Legion, like I said, a very well-rounded Legendary Legion. I think that's why there's not too many special rules, but there are, you know, nice special rules in there. Um, but, you know, sometimes you get re you get a lot of, you know, different special rules, like um, certain upgrades or stuff like that. But, um, you know, having really not too many special rules, I think, counteracts um, how well diverse there are of course elves are really good elven shooting you've even got hobbits in there um and then you've got the def you know defense of the um minas Tirith guys uh with their shield wall um obviously helps quite a lot in there and of course you know you've got the hero heaps of heroes the rangers of the north really really good um well-rounded list i think i think that could play really well Next up, we have the Army of Arnold. So this is obviously, uh, well, it's the Arvidui one. So it's when, um, is it uh, Arthur Dane was really in its uh, height, um, which is cool. Um, so we have uh, Arvidui, Last King of Arnor. We have Aranath, that's cool as well. Uh, Malbeth, Argadir, Captain of Arnor. Ranger of the North, Dunedain, Warrior of Arnor, Knight of Arnor, and Rangers of Arnor. And the additional rules, it says an army of Arnor must always include Arvidui, who is always the army's leader. So you have to take Arvidui, which is interesting. So this is like the Royal Army of Arnor. Um, it's like the army that, uh, you know, is around when, you know, Fornost falls, that kind of stuff. Uh, Rangers of the North and Dunedain in this force gain the Arnor keyword. That's really good. You know, it definitely helps with a few things. Um, I think that also means that they're going to get the uh, Courage buff with, within Arvidui, which is nice. Um, protect the King. Friendly Arnor warriors automatically pass Courage test well that within six inches of Arvidui, last King of Gondor. Uh, sorry, last King of Arnor, sorry. Um, so, obviously, that's going to help them with that. Um, so, your Rangers of the North and Dunedain will also get, uh, will automatically pass Courage tests um, within six inches of Arvidui. I think if you're going to take Arnor, you may as well just take the Legion um, at, that, at this point. Just because, like, that's pretty amazing. I think that's also a special rule anyway. Um, 
just for the army of Arnor in general, just like the, I think that's, isn't that the original, um, uh, Arnor, actually, we can't, we, what am I saying, we could just check back here, it's back, it's right back here, uh, friendly army, automatically, yep, yeah, so it's exactly the same as the army, army bonus, so, so that's really nice, so that, that's still in there, I thought that, I thought that was the case, power of the seer, this is what everyone's, um, <laughs> going on about, uh, the visions that come to Malbeth will often focus around those of great importance to Arnold, and Malbeth can use these to warn them of an immediate peril. Friendly Arnold hero models receive a bonus of plus one when rolling for Malbeth's gift of foresight special rule. So basically, it's going from a is that a five plus to a four plus? Um, I don't have the book with me. Is it normally a four plus for um? Uh, so, sorry, normally a five plus for Malbeth's gift of foresight. That's kind of amazing. Um, so, yeah, he, 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 your hero is going to be sticking around for that little bit longer, um, which is, you know, great, especially for Arnold. Um, <laughs> because that's, again, <coughs> a shame with um, the one of the, the big weakness for Arnold is the courage, which obviously doesn't make sense considering the law. But um, that ha having that, having your hero stick around more, which means your courage, if you know, you could obviously daisy chain. Um, from Arvidui, and it's going to make your hero stick around, it's going to make Arvidui stick around a lot longer as well, which is really nice, so your army's going to stick around for a lot longer, um, so that's really cool, and again, with the friendly Arnor heroes, um, which means that Rangers of the North and Dunedain will get them as well, which is really, really cool, and the last one, we have Foresight of the Elder, um, which I think, I don't remember who actually has this, is it Elrond who has it, or someone else, I'm not too sure, um, before the game begins, I don't, actually, I don't think it is Arnold, uh, Elrond, I think it's someone else, definitely someone else has this special rule, I don't remember who, who, who has it though, uh, before the game begins, roll d6 and make a note of it, uh, there are, these are Malbeth's foresight points for the battle, during the priority phase, after the dice has been rolled, so long as he is alive and on the battlefield, Malbeth may choose to expend these foresight points to alter the controlling player's dice roll, for each foresight point expended, Malbeth may alter the dice score by either a minus one or a plus one to a minimum of one and a maximum of six. So if you roll d6 you can get a six, you can use six points obviously. Um, so it basically means you can try and alter fate. So if you know, if you want, if you really want priority that turn, you can do that. You know, you can make, you know, if, if he gets a six and you get a four, you can, you know, bump yours up or, you know, bump his down to five and bump yours up to six. Or, you know, if, if there might be points where you don't want priority. So you bump theirs up and you bump yours down, you know. There's um there's definitely some certain situations that could definitely be handy, um, for sure. Um, so that's very cool. Um, very, very cool. Uh, it says here, the other key model is Malbeth to see it. Not only does he allow friendly Arnold hero models nearby to ignore any wounds suffered on a 4+, plus. yeah, so originally it was a 5+, plus. it now is a 4+, plus, um, which is amazing, making them incredibly survivable, but he also brings a number of foresight points that can be used at either a priority roll to push the odds in your favour, the odds are ever in your favour. So yeah, Arnold hero is basically ignoring wounds on a 4+, plus. that's basically a fate roll, um, you know, obviously within, well, you know, within range of Malbeth, but that's still kind of amazing. Um, the Army of Arnor represents the final defense of the kingdom against the overwhelming forces of Angmar. Arvidu is crucial to the force being its leader, but it's also, but also allowing friendly Arnor, Arnor models within six inches of him to automatically pass courage tests, ensuring they fight uh, to the last one. He rem <laughs> remains alive. <coughs> so, a very cool list. I think if you're going to take Arnor, you're crazy not to take this list, in, in, in my opinion. Um, I think this could be a very strong list, in my opinion, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Next up, we have Host of the Witch King. Quite a lot of stuff in here. Obviously, the army of... You know, it's basically everything. Um, well, not quite everything. There's no Khan Doom stuff in here, but I think it's pretty much everything else, um, except a few things. So we have the Witch King. Um, with He can take an armored horse, horse, a normal horse, I should say, or a Morgul Blade. He can't take a Fel Beast, which is great. Also, the Tainted and the Doomer Lake in here. Uh, the Shadow of Rudart, Nazthrak, uh, sorry, Nazthak, a Shade, the Barrowite, or a Barrowite, because they're not named. Uh, Angmar Orc Captains, Angmar Orc Shamans, Angmar Orc Warriors, Angmar Wag Riders, and Dead Marsh Spectres. So, no Hill Trolls, no Cave Trolls. Um, obviously, Cave Trolls aren't in Angmar anymore. <coughs> so, no Hill Trolls, no um, uh, Werewolves, which is interesting, because obviously they're in their own thing. Um, and no Birdo. 
which is interesting because they're in their own legion. I don't know why they're not in here because, like, you know, it seems like they do, you know, in, in the scenarios, definitely does seem like they are part of the Witch King's list. Um, but maybe because they're in their own uh, in their own um, legendary legion that they're not a part of this one. I, I'm not too sure. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, basically everything from Angmar except for Hill Trolls, Birda, and um, Werewolves, I believe. So, additional rules. Host of the Witch King Force must always include the Witch King of Angmar, who is always the army's leader. Makes sense. It's the host of the Witch King. And the Witch King counts as a hero of legend in this legendary legion. So, he goes up from... Is it uh, Valor up to lead a Legend? So from 15 models, he can lead to 18, which is cool. Uh, special rules. If that fell kingdom shall rise again, Rivendell, Lorien, the Shire, even Gondor itself shall fall. Uh, friendly Angmar Ang Orc models within 6 inches of friendly spirit heroes gain the Terror special rule. Um, which again is exactly the same as I believe it would make sense. I think it is the same one as the uh, army bonus for this one. Ah, no, it's different. So in the army bonus, it's only three inches. In the legion, it's six inches. So obviously, um, that makes it a bit, bit, bit better. Uh, a bit better. Um, that's a nice change. That's cool. Uh, dark sorceries. Friendly ringwraith models may reroll a single D six when making a casting a resist test. That's kind of a, that's kind of crazy. Um, I mean, you only have the three, um, but that's very very cool in, in any way. The witch king's great. A great wizard. <coughs> uh, to use Lord of the Nazgul the Witch King increases attack characteristics to 3 which is incredible uh, additionally the Witch King only uses a point of will for having been in a fight and if he loses the fight during the fight phase um, if he doesn't win the dual roll to see which side uh, makes strikes so if he wins the f if he keeps winning the fights he's not going to lose will from fights so you can use that on magic um, so yeah maybe you just have the Witch King go up you know, have him up at 20 will, 3 might, 3 fate, with 3 attacks, like, he's gonna be intense, um, and, you know, if he, <laughs> have him with other things, like, have him with, um, you know, a shade or a barrel light near him, just in case, you know, you can paralyze him, paralyze him so they can't make strikes, um, you know, even if, even if he does lose, but if he doesn't lose, he's not going to lo be losing that will. So you can use that just for magic, and you know you can obviously do a f quite a few things with that. Um, there, there, there's some there's some nasty little uh, <laughs> nasty little combos you could do with that. That's for sure. No man can kill me. Um, the witch king gains a bonus of plus one to his five value when engaged with an enemy man model. What does he fight five? So he's now fight six. That's kind of cool. Um, actually, when I was theorizing for this book, I was hoping that if there was a legendary legion for the Witch King, that he'd have like an amped up profile. Um, and he kind of does, but it's in the special rules. So that's nice. So most... <coughs> so we have one that really affects Angmar Orcs, which is cool, which is a buff to the original um, uh, army bonus. Then we have one that, uh, you know, obviously... Uh, what's the word? Um, affects all ring wraiths, so the tainted, the witch king, and the Dwemer lake, and then we have two that uh, affect the witch king himself. So that's cool. Um, obviously, the big the big thing in here is the witch king. Um, so he's going to be a beast in this list. So that's that's a lot of fun. I'd be interested to try that out. Next up, we have the army of Khan Doom. If you're just going to take a regular Khan Doom army, because um, obviously you can't take a Khan Doom army from the army list. Um, but you can take a Khan Doom, straight Khan Doom army from Angmar, um, because Angmar does include all the Khan Doom stuff. Um, you'd be crazy not to, because the army bonus, so you'd be crazy to do it, because the army list, the army bonus wouldn't uh, help you at all. Um, but if you do want to take just Khan Doom stuff, um, take the Legion, you know, because you get special rules in here as well. <coughs> so you can take Aldrak, you can take Freyj, you can take a, a Captain of Khan Doom. You can also take a few orcs. You can take an Angmar orc captain. You can take warriors of Khan Doom. You can take Angmar orc warriors. You can take Angmar wag riders and orc trackers. Would be nice to see the orc trackers come back. They're not available at the moment. Um, they were in uh, Defense of the North, but they still weren't available. They haven't been available for quite a few years now. Um, so it'd be nice to see them come back at some point. Um, I picked mine up on eBay for quite, quite, quite cheap. I picked up six of them. Um, but I'd be interested to pick up some more if they ever came back. I'd be maybe up another six or something. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, additional rules: An army of Khan Doom must always include Aldrak. 
makes sense. He is the war leader of Khan Doom. <coughs> There's a few special rules. So show sh show of strength. If a Khan Doom hero, which is important, kills one or more enemy models in combat, then the duration of the following turn, they're going to bonus a plus one to their fight value, which is not. Let me go back here. Uh, Battle Frenzy, it's not that. It's not that. Models combat with enemy model, uh, plus... W okay, so that is that is very different. So they're going to have a pl bonus of plus one to their bite value. So uh, if they kill one or more enemy models in combat, so that means if... Uh, Aldrak's going to go in... He's going to be absolutely unstoppable at low points value. So Aldrak would go up to fight six... Freish will go up to fight four, but you really don't want him in fights anyway. And the normal captains will go up to fight five. So <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Like captains of Khan Doom going up against toe to toe with elves. That's kind of intense, um, especially with the, all the other buffs that they can get as well. Um, banners of Khan Doom. Their banners are six inches instead of three, which is awesome. And uh, Freish, uh, words of power. Freish's incantations of power are increased to six inches, and in, usually they're three. Um, so obviously, if you just want to take Khan Doom and maybe a few orcs in there as well, you'd be crazy not to. Uh, you'd be crazy not to not take this. So, if you, yeah, if you're gonna do that, definitely take this list. And next up, we have one that I think a lot of people do, definitely want to try, um, myself included. I think it's gonna be a fun little list. Is the Wolf Pack of Angmar? Um, so the army composition is a Wild Wild Chieftain, Werewolves, Felwags, and <laughs> Wildwags. <coughs> so I think this is gonna be a fun list, um, just to take you know, just for just for just for funsies. Um, le legendary uh, <laughs> wag lists don't go too well, but we'll see how how this one goes. So additional rules: Werewolves from this legendary legion will will still benefit from from heroic actions and stand fast of wild wild chieftains, even though they do not have the wag keyword. So, leader of the pack. The wild, wild chieftain that is the leader gains an additional point of each of might, will, and fate. Additionally, they are treated as a hero of Valar. So, Valar goes up to 15. They can lead 15, which is cool. Um, I don't know the, the points of a wild, wild chieftain, like the, um, the stats. So, um, I, I assume that means it goes up to 3 might, 3, three will, and 2 fate, I assume. I, th I assume, but who knows. Uh, Howl of the wolf pack. Once per game at the start of any fight phase... The Wild Wild Chieftain, that is your leader, can declare that they are using this ability. Until the end of the turn, friendly models from this legendary legion gain a bonus of plus one to their five value and may reroll any of ones when rolling to wound. That's going to be crazy for the werewolves. That means they're going to go up to fight six um, and a bonus of plus one even if they have knockdown. That's, that's kind of insane. At strength five, um, with knockdown... Fight five, strength. You know, fight six, strength five. That's that could be fun. That could be a lot of fun. And obviously, wild wild chieftains, you can have multiple of them, but one has to be your leader, which will have the extra bits bits on it. Um, so that's fun. Protect the alpha. If the wild wild chieftain knows your leader has suffered at least one wound, then friendly models within six inch of them count as being in range of the banner. So you kind of want him to take a wound. Um, to be honest, maybe get him there, let him get into combat. And try and get a wound on him and then pull him out. Um, and Feral Charge. When a friendly wild model charges as an enemy infantry model, they gain the knock to the ground bonus as if they were cavalry. This bonus is lost if they are subsequently charged by an enemy cavalry model. That's very, very cool because that's the werewolf um, That's the werewolf one, which I think, I think obviously works a lot better for werewolves. <coughs> but for wilds to finally have something like that, that they can do something like that, they can like you know finally push through um that's 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 that yeah th th this is my first time reading this if you, if you don't know guys so i'm i'm kind of learning and um reacting you know a as we go so yeah that i i reckon this could be a lot of fun um at lower points values obviously you don't want to go too high so maybe like at 500 points max because <coughs> that's what you probably take two or three wild chieftains a couple of werewolves Fell wags and wild wags. I don't know. Would you want to take? Would you want to take wild wags over fell wags? They're an extra point for, for a fell wag, but I think you'd probably want to take fell wags more than uh, wild wags. But it is what it is because they have um fell sight. Um, but yeah, that 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 sh that could be a, what wag a wag chieftain with um fifteen werewolves. How many points is that? 
I kind of want to know. So we have 80 points for a... We're, we're doing this live, guys. We're doing 80 points for, for a Wild Wild Chieftain. And then 25 by 15 is 455 points. So that's, that's kind of cool. So you could do it like... Uh, that's kind of annoying. If only the Wild Wild Chieftain was like 75 points, but he's not. So you could do like a 500 point list and just play like 20, uh, 45 points down. Or you could you could do like a Wild Wild Chieftain and what was it? That would be 12, I think. And be like a couple points down for 400 points. But that could, be, that, that could definitely be a lot of fun. I'd be interested to try this list and uh, see how it goes. <coughs> and then spoilers, we're not going to do this bit yet. But we will talk about the other Legendary Legions while we're here. So next up, we have Arathorn's Stand. Um, so this is obviously in the appendix scenario. We're going to, in the appendix, we're going to be talking about the rest of the book in the next video and my uh, final thoughts about the uh, entire supplement. Um, but this one contains Arathorn, Halbarad, um, Rangers of the North, and Dunedain. So n not, nothing too crazy in here. Um, no, nothing with Aragorn because obviously Aragorn is quite young when uh, Arathorn's around. Um, Arath as Arathorn stand for... Uh, an Arathorn stand for... Uh, I can't even read. An Arathorn's stand force must always include Arathorn. Well, that makes sense. <coughs> Special rules. They're dangerous folk wandering the wilds. Rangers of the North and Dunedain from this legendary legion may benefit from the stand fast at Arathorn or Halbarad. Additionally, Rangers of the North and Dunedain from this legendary legion increase their attack value to two while they have the infantry keyword. That's cool. Um, I know a lot of people would like to see um, Aranath with this rule. Um, you know, with... If Aranath, it, like maybe if you have the um, the what's it called, the Fornos Legion, or just like a general rule for um, Aranath in general, because I don't believe he does have this rule. Um, if we quickly go back, um, Aranath, Aranath, Aranath. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have that. So it would be nice if Aranath, if you just want to take like to take Aranath and some Rangers, um, if they could, if Rangers of the North could go up to two attacks with him being. Let, let as well, but it is what it is. Um, so this is cool. Um, Master of Terrain, friendly model was getting the Woodland Creature Mountain Dweller special rule. That's you know easy easy to move around. Heir of Isildur, whenever Arathorn expends a might point, roll d six on a four plus the might point of might is free. It do not uh, and does not reduce Arathorn's store of might. That's kind of cool. That's like a mini mighty hero. And Silent Ambush and scenarios where you roll for additional forces to arrive, such as those that use for a reinforcements rule. You receive a bonus of plus one to the dice roll for warbands for this uh, from, for warbands from this legendary legion. In scenarios where you roll to see which part of the board your warband deploys in, you may modify the dice roll by plus one or minus one. That's kind of cool. Um, again, I don't think it's as broken as like other legions uh, have been, such as um, like Rangers of Athelion and all that kind of stuff, because it is all big point heroes. There's no normal rangers in here. It's all heroes. <laughs> it's basically an all hero force so it'd be interesting to try this for sure um but you know uh i don't have any of these models at all i used to have some dunedine for some fellowship stuff but that was in my old collection so i don't own any of these models i will be getting some for the um scenarios obviously but um that's quite a way off <coughs> and finally we have birder's horde which is i think another fan favorite that people want to try so this one comes with Birder, Angmar Orc Captains, Angmar Orc Shamans, Wild Wild Chieftains, Angmar Orc Warriors, Angmar Warg Riders, Hill Trolls, and Wild Wargs. And a Birder's Horde Force must always include Birder. Um, special Rules, Master of Terrain. Friendly models that gain the mount uh, Wooden Creature and Mountain Dweller Special Rules, so just like the um, Arathorn's Legendary Legion. A fearsome foe, Birdo gains the Blood and Glory special rule. Additionally, if Birdo kills an enemy hero in combat, he gains the Fearless special rule for the remainder of the battle. So he has to kill one enemy hero. Um, so obviously you just try and go go for a captain or something like that. Or like a Ranger of the North. If they were like having like a... a it'd be cool to have like a bit of a standoff between these two forces. Cause then that would be quite themey as well. Um, and Blood and Glory. Isn't Blood and Glory if you... Blood and Glory is if you wound a model, you deal two wounds instead or something like that. I'm not too sure. I've never actually used that rule. Um, I've, don't, I've only heard about it. And the interesting special rule here is that ambushes, you get to choose between two different abilities. So Birdo's Warband is ambushing and does not deploy on the board as normal. 
Instead, at the end of both players' third move phase, the ambushing warband must choose one of the following. Move onto the board from any board edge via the rules for reinforcements, or deploy in or within one inch of a wood building out rocky outcrop or this or other similar piece of terrain that the warband could hide in. Models deployed in this way may not be placed within the control zones of any enemy models. Models that enter the board in this way count as b having moved half of their move allowance for the purposes of shooting. So, that, so I'm guessing that means that they can't, so they've deployed so they can't move further um, because they're, they're being deployed, but they can still shoot, which means that you can still throw stones, um, which is funny. So, like, imagine Birda and, like, What's Birda? Is he, I'm guessing he's probably Fortitude or Valor. <coughs> so maybe imagine just Birda with a bunch of hill trolls. That could be funny. Um, that, that could be a lot of fun. A thousand points of Birda and hill trolls. That could be fun. That that that's like a Throne of Skulls army. Just Birda and hill trolls. That that's that's kind of fun. Um, and yeah, it, it's nice that it actually it actually does specify. A wood building rocky outcrop or other similar piece of terrain. You'd probably have to get some uh, FAQs in there. Just I know there won't be any FAQs probably because um, the new edition's coming out. But um, yeah, I I'm sure it's you know rules is written, rules is intended kind of thing. Um, and that is the last legendary legion. And we will talk about the um, appendix in the next scenario. Uh, sorry, in the next. Uh, uh, video, but um, let me know what you guys think. What is your favorite legendary legion? Would love to know. Is it uh, Battle of Fornos, Army of Arnor? Th there's kind of a few that I do want to try. I definitely want to try Wolfpack of Angmar. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, obviously, Birders, Troll Legion. I think that, that those two are definitely the ones that people want to try, and I can definitely see why. Um, Army of Khan Doom, I think, will be really good at lower points values, in my opinion. Um, Host of the Witch King, I think, is just you know a lot of trickery, as uh, as Angmar usually is. Um, but, you know, obviously there's no, there's really no monsters in there. Like, you don't have hill trolls, you don't have cave trolls anymore, obviously, and there's no birder. Um, but the Witch King's obviously the main centre focus of that force, which is cool, obviously. Um, Army of Arnor, I think this would be a really good force, um, if played properly. Um, you know, good, you know, not, not, not implying anything, but, um, you know, that 4 plus save with Malbeth, I think it's going to really, really do a good job. Um, and obviously the Battle of Fallen is, is a quite, um, well-rounded legion, I think. I think that could be a lot of fun to do as well. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys are, are most looking forward to seeing. And, uh, yeah, that was all the Legendary Legions. And there we go, guys. So that is all the Legendary Legions. I, again, like I said, some really cool ones that I would like to try out, um, myself. And, you know, who knows, I, maybe at one stage I could, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we can do. Um, I definitely want to do the scenarios more, so, to be honest. Um, but like I said, there will be one more video in this series uh, of looking through the book, and that will be talking about the appendix, uh, a few things in there, as well as looking through some a little bit, the other areas of the book that we haven't checked out yet. But I hope you guys have been enjoying this series so far. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more uh, stuff coming as well. Bit of a sneak peek. These have arrived. They are, so, some of my models have arrived, so um, you can expect some content following that. Uh, very very soon so hope you guys will enjoy that but um, i'm gonna get out of here thank you so very much for watching if you guys did make sure to leave a like comment share and subscribe if you haven't already um yeah support us uh by becoming a channel member if you would like um and uh i'll see you guys in the next video or stream and as always happy gaming